Well, we haven't had a chance to talk to Bill O'Reilly here for a few weeks to see what's up. Hello. Welcome, Bill O'Reilly. Beck, and, and how did you get through that period of time? I mean, you know, I'm, I was, I'm usually kind of your muse I, guiding you in the right direction. I, I was, how did you do it? I was happy. I was content. And then suddenly today, it looks like the world is on fire. And I'm like, oh, I'm Bill O'Reilly. So they must be connected somehow well, or another. <laughs> some of your some of your staff told me that you were on BillOReilly.com dot com every day uh, in the hiatus, so therefore right, you knew right uh, which way well, to go. So so Bill, <laughs> you and I, I have a feeling uh, yeah. may disagree uh, on this uh, because I I have you know I I I like what the president has done in some of his policies, Gorsuch, uh, you know uh, the Paris Accords, the uh the tax bill thank you for relief on taxes not what i would have wanted but i'll take it congratulations thank you for that um i can't think of there's a there's like six or seven really big things that he's done that i'm, I'm really happy about but i can't take him talking anymore i just i i can't i i'm tired yeah, of I, I, I i'm tired of disagree. defending i'm tired of defending the stuff and i'm not a big defender but i i'm t me i can't imagine what the average american who voted for him is like crap yeah, hole losing, countries i believe he's losing support because he is too bombastic word of the day um, uh, so we don't disagree on this in fact i just finished writing a column for the hill it basically says look um the president's going to undo all his successes if he continues the excess of rhetoric. So, you know, I understand Trump probably better than anybody in the country, I say humbly, because I've known him for so long. He doesn't think about the unintended consequences or repercussions of what he says. So he's talking like he's still a real estate magnet, and that's how real estate magnets talk. Oh, why do you want to get involved with that asshole uh, place? That's how they talk. All right, so, so there were a lot that. of people. There were a lot of people on Twitter last night. They're like, "That's why we like him. He talks like the guy well, at the end of the what, bar stool." No, well, he, it's not a bar. Said on, that's what Waters said on Fox. <laughs> yeah, he, but, but, but it isn't a bar. At, it isn't a bar. Yeah, I didn't hire Twitter, that guy. Okay, look, the supporters are going to be the supporters. They're going to rationalize and say whatever they want to justify what Donald Trump does. So that whatever they say, okay, let's consider it, but. Let's all get together and say what's good for the country, right? Yes. So is it good for the country to call no. ADL Salvador and some African countries assholes? No. No. Do we all have agreement there? Are there any dissenters there? So that's not good for the country for a president to do it. Now, I make the point that Ronald Reagan called the Soviet Union the evil empire. All right. But when he was criticized and he was immediately criticized by the Reagan haters, they made the point, well, we're not calling the Russian people evil. We're saying the system is evil. Therefore, Reagan got very, you know, he won that. He won it. But here, Haiti hasn't done anything to us or El Salvador or the African countries, and they're copulated by people of color. And the narrative already is that Trump's a white supremacist. So basically, Donald Trump goes over to Media Matters and David Brock and says, hey, I'm going to give you another one. Here. Yeah, exactly right. I'm going to give it to you. Exactly right. right. So that all of the accomplishments of the African-American employment, which is now the lowest it's been in 45 years, are gone. Yeah. He obliterates his own. His own good. Accomplishment. He, he had people this week when he went and sat down with the uh, Republicans and Democrats on DACA, and he said, look, I'll sign anything. Just give it to me. I trust you guys. There were a lot of people who were Trump supporters who weren't surprisingly outraged by that. They said, you know what? He's playing them. He's going to yeah, explain them. Yeah. Sure. Well, I don't believe that, but it, okay. I so, do. all right. So if, if that were true, he's just blown all of that. If that was his big strategy, he's just blown all of it i don't know if he's blown it or not because i think that there's so much desperation on the part of the uh democratic party to get some daca relief so they have something to campaign on next this year uh that i think they can still forge a deal but part of the deal has to be the wall 
and he's not going to back away from that. He can't. Um, but look, the I don't understand why after a year of getting his his face kicked in by his opponents, the hate Trumpers, why he just doesn't pull back and be the guy that he was in that meeting. You know, that was an orchestrated meeting where he had uh, the Democrats and Republicans. He was in charge. He was measured. He didn't say anything bombastic. Well, if you can do it there, then you got to do it in other places. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's. I think he gets angry. I think his emotions rule and all of that. I don't think he's disciplined enough. I just don't. He's not disciplined enough. No, he isn't. So what do you? You know, uh, people. People want to say, well, he wasn't talking about the people. Okay. Well, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Uh, no, it, no. Bill, because, Bill, because Bill, if look, Bill. If you look at the... No, you've got to bring context to... to no, the I will bring context. Like, why are we bringing all these Jews in here from Nazi no, Germany? No, no, no. No, it's no, the no, same Beth. thing. No, 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 no. This was a debate about Norway, mm-hmm. okay, Yeah. as opposed to right. third world nations. It, it, he all campaigned, right. Trump campaigned, uh-huh. on the fact that... All immigrants coming here should be self-sufficient. I agree. Immediately help I agree. the country. I agree. That's what he so, on. so Denmark and Norway, you think those citizens know how to be self-sufficient when they have free everything? All right, coming. I would rather the weeds. He's no, I'm not getting into we the want weeds. Educated no. people. Look, Norway and Denmark have one of the highest educated populations in the world. Their skilled uh, workforce is top notch. If you okay. look at the context of it, Bill, let me give you some context. Let me give you some right. context. Quote from Donald Trump Jr. Uh, quote. Uh, shoot, now I just ah, that's stupid internet. Hang on just a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, yes. Okay, here it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, like him. This is he's talking about his dad. Here it is. Like yeah. him. I'm yeah. a big believer in the racehorse theory. He's an incredibly accomplished guy. My mother is incredibly accomplished. She's an Olympian. So I'd like to believe that I'm genetically predisposed to be better than average. This is eugenics and this is discredited but the trump family believes it he believes in this right. so when he's okay. talking about denmark and the netherlands because they're predisposed genetically it is part of his fabric i can't read the mind i can't say that's not true it's you can't prove the disproven negative but in the context of what the discussion was in the white house all right the context was Trump wants people who are educated and skilled to come in, and the Democratic Party, they go back to give me your tired and poor. That's a huge gulf. And I, I have to right? tell you something. I have to tell you something. I go back there. Because, well, it, what, I, because I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, are, Bill, let me say. These are almost with you. Let me say something. Bill, uh, 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 the give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. The Democrats yeah. always read that like, oh, give me the worst of the worst, and I'm going to hold them and hug them. No, that whole thing is a challenge. Give me the people that the world says is worthless, and I'm telling you that there's enough in them that they want to succeed, that they want to be better, that they don't want to live in a crap hole country. They want to succeed. I'm going to give them a chance by getting out of their way. So I go right back to that same poem and say, yeah, I would rather have people who are hungry to learn, hungry to change their station in life, than a bunch of people from Sweden that have just as great of chance of saying, well, I want more government to give me. How come I didn't? How come we're not taxing the rich more here? Okay. And then my sympathies are, are probably more toward you than uh, getting the fat cats in here. But that's the debate, all right? And if you look at the context of the debate that the Republicans and Trump say 50% of immigrant families in America are now receiving entitlements from the government. Right, and that is... got to stop that. And that is... That's the debate. And... <laughs> yes and no. 
uh, it, it is the debate. It is a separate debate that we need to have standards. But you don't say that there's no one in crap hole countries. Why are we taking all these crap hole country people? N no. Why are we taking people who don't have something to offer and want to live off of the sweat of other people's brow? Those people come from all different countries. I contend the Western countries are probably giving us some of the worst people because they want universal health care, universal daycare, universal housing, universal food, universal hugs. I mean, those people are used to that. Well, I think we can have a fair system here that take uh, achievers and people who need uh, a hand up. I, I think it's possible to do it. But right now we have two separate camps. And if you do, if you look at the context of the remarks, Trump was just boosting in a bombastic way his point of view. Why are we taking people who are going to come here and we're going to have to support them for 10 or 15 years until they get up to speed? That was what he was talking about. He, didn't, he wasn't making judgments about how good or bad the people were, but that's not the Christian point of view. Um, and I, I suspect that maybe some of your, uh, uh, some of your opinion is, is taken from as Christian, Judeo-Christian ethic, we have an obligation to help the downtrodden. Yeah, uh, no, uh, okay, hang on just a second. I, um, I'm going to come back to that here in a second. No, not really. I mean, yes, we have to take care of people, but the best way to take care of people is to be a strong lifeboat. And that doesn't help. You can't just keep taking people in that you have to help. I want to take people who maybe are disadvantaged, maybe are not, but have something to offer. And that could be from their brains to their hard work ethic. And that you can't judge from which country they're coming from. That is, judge a man by the content of his character, not the color of his skin or what part of the world he comes from. Back in just a second with Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Glenn Beck. Welcome back to the program. Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Uh, uh, Bill, I think I think we've covered everything we need to cover on the on the uh, crap hole countries thing. I think we both agree that it was wrong to say. Um, I think equally agree on that. And uh, we both can see that what the what the policies are. I think we agree on. It's just can we is there anything we can do to get him to shut the pie hole? Just shut up. Shut up. No, I don't think so. I mean, I just think he is a guy who reacts off the cuff emotionally and uh, as you pointed out, doesn't really have the discipline to pull back on it. Yeah. You know, you go from one president, Obama, who was unbelievably disciplined, yes, supremely yes. disciplined. Yes. Um and some of his uh views and and what he tried to do as president, were really destructive for the nation. Yes. Um, but you'd never be able to lay it on him. Uh, now you go the, the opposite. Yeah. And you go the opposite. I was actually getting stuff done yep. uh, in some areas. Yep. I mean, the ISIS story is one of the greatest uh, miss, um, let's see, one of the greatest scandals of American journalism. ISIS was defeated in less than a year by the United States primarily. Yep. And you would never know it by the reportage. <laughs> yeah, it it's, just, it's just all ignored. of a sudden like they didn't exist. Yeah. It's all of a sudden they didn't exist. Okay. So for I, eight years, they ran wild under Barack Obama, yeah. killing tens of thousands of people in heinous ways, causing all of this migration yep. to Europe, yep. which has disrupted the whole continent. And defeated. In the year, they're out. They're out. And you don't care about it. Yep. Back in a second with more from Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Glenn Beck. Mercury. This is 
the Glenn Beck Program. So last 10 minutes with Bill O'Reilly. And I, Bill, we have so much to cover. I'd like to just do kind of a, a quick list uh, here with you and just get your quick thoughts on things. Um, all right. Things that have happened since the last time we talked. First of all, let's start with the closest FISA yesterday, the FISA bill. Um, what are your thoughts on the renewal of, of this and the expansion of being able to not only eavesdrop on Americans, but use that uh, information against Americans, even if we don't have a warrant? You know, I, I really don't. I'd have to see what the wording is and all that, and I don't have it in front of me. You know, my basic thing is that you need a judge to sign off on these warrants. Um, that I don't trust the FBI or the NSA to do this stuff on their own. That's right. my basic philosophy. Okay. Um, next, Steve Bannon and the whole debacle. Let, well, let's let's start at the beginning. Fire and Fury. I read the book. Uh, you know, I wasn't impressed. I was bored throughout. Hmm. Um, the first chapter basically says that Trump really didn't want to win the election mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, told his wife that, okay, based on no sourcing, there's very little sourcing in the book. Yes. Except for Bannon. Except for Bannon. Um, but I covered that campaign as closely as anyone, and I can tell you that Donald Trump campaigned as hard as any human being on this earth. Yes. Okay, so yep. why, if he didn't want to win, would he do that? Why would he do five five appearances the last day, the last one at midnight in Michigan. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't stack. Yeah. So, I think uh, he, you know, I think you want to read it, read it, but I didn't yeah. get much out of it. I, I thought, he, you know, on that, that's not even worth talking about. I, I will tell you this, that uh, I found I found the book the opposite. I found it intriguing, um, be, and it found it exactly the same way you did. There's not a lot of sourcing here except for Bannon. So yeah. I strip everything out and go, well, an interesting story. Who knows if that's true? Right. Um, and, and it, you know, the the way that this was assembled was it was it's basically an essay by yeah. the author. Right. That's all. Right. It's, a, it's an essay. Correct. So, okay, you know, you want to believe it, believe it. You don't, don't. Correct. What I found interesting, though, was that this was – on the record with Bannon, and Bannon was uh, uh, trying to separate himself and say, look, Trumpism is really Bannonism, uh, which I disagree with, uh, and here's what it really is, stands for. I don't know if Wolf knew that he was being used by Bannon, but the hero always seems to turn out to be Bannon, and the bad guys always seem to be Bannon's enemies. And I think Bannon, I think Bannon miscalculated because I think yeah. he thought Roy Moore was going to win, and this would come out and show that he's really the brains, and it's done the opposite. Yeah, you know, look, those those power games behind the scenes, I've never been interested in them. Um, you know, Bannon, I think, is a smart guy, but he trusted this author, and the author made him look foolish. So you you like Bannon? I don't know him. Okay. I don't know him. I just think he's a smart guy who trust, trusted this guy to do a piece mm -hmm. in the book that, as you say, would put Bannon in the uh, uh, the image of being yes. the kingmaker. Yes. And and it didn't work out. I mean, because the king didn't like the book, and so Bannon's gone. Uh, so, so, so he's fired from Breitbart. Can Breitbart yeah. restore itself to what I have no Andrew... I, I don't know. Okay. You know me, Beck. I'm, I'm not involved right. with this ideological stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know how many people are angry about it. I'm, I don't live in that world. Okay. You know, my world is an observation of what is happening and trying to find the truth. Not Oprah's your truth but the truth about what's happening. All right, so then I hesitate to ask you about your truth on Oprah Winfrey and well, her running in 20, 2020. She'd win. No, I shouldn't say she'd win. She'd win the nomination if, she, if Oprah Winfrey wants to be president. And again, I wrote, uh, as I'm sure you know, a column for The Hill and yep, I was yep, on yep, BillOReilly.com. Yep. Barack Obama is behind Oprah Winfrey. OK, mm -hmm. this is a return to power for Barack Obama if Oprah Winfrey decides to run. Mm -hmm. They're very close. Mm -hmm. That speech was not written by Oprah. It was written for her by professionals, I believe, su supplied by the Obamas. And o Barack Obama is furious about Donald Trump in, in every way. Sure. 
that his that his policies are being dismantled, sure. that he's being made to look as like he wasn't competent. He wants to return to power. What better way than to have Oprah Winfrey run and he's the king, the real king behind the throne? So, That's what's happening. So I will tell That's you this. The truth. So here, here's what I find interesting. I really believe that if Oprah announces, just give her the nomination because she'd win the nomination. Yeah. And then yeah. just in the next day, hold the election because no minds are going to be changed. Oprah is not going to swing any Trump voters. <laughs> Trump's not going to swing any Oprah voters. So let's just. Wouldn't you like to see? But yes, I would. Wouldn't you like to see some some good interviews oh. with Oprah about public policy? Oh I would. my gosh, I would love that, and I'd love to see a debate. The question is, in the imaginary debate between Donald Trump and Oprah Winfrey. Who ends up winning those with the public, do you think? You know, it's hard to say. The Trump, he has 35% of the people behind him. I don't expect that's going to go down. If the economy continues to do well, he'll add another 5 to 7. So that's 40, 42%. So he's competitive. He's competitive. But Oprah, you know, is going to bring the minorities to the fore. Everyone will vote just like they do for Barack Obama. It's the same constituency. So she's got a real chance. Yeah. She got, but, but do you think Trump there's a real chance? really that... on his game to expose what's behind the throne. Not one, not one journalistic outfit made my point that I just made to you. Not one. That Barack Obama is behind this. They, they know it, but they won't say it. And that's another, you know, unbelievable deception that's going on in this in this country. Do you believe she will run? It's hard to say. Um, I, I don't. I've never seen. I know her a little bit. Been on her program. She loves adulation. Okay, she loves it, just like Trump loves it. But criticism, she does not like. Okay. And you know, if she runs. They'll tear her to pieces. Yeah, the, the, uh, she'll never be. Will... She'll never be the uh, Oprah Winfrey that she even was in the eighties or the early nineties. No. So, does yeah. she want to go through that for a year, being attacked every single day? Uh, that is the question. Yeah. Um, quickly, Joe Arpaio running for Senate in Arizona. Uh, don't run, Joe. Come on, man. Uh, you know, it's another Roy Moore situation. Uh, don't run. You're what is he? Eighty now. Come on, just let the regular Republicans run. Uh, I just think that's not not a good thing. Okay, um, Feinstein, can you explain what happened with her release of the Fusion GPS in under two minutes? Yes, I can. The Democrats fear this scandal more than any other. It's going to be shown that Hillary Clinton's campaign was behind the funding of the Fusion GPS fraud. I don't know whether it's going to be shown, but it's certainly possible that once the Obama administration got the phony info, they brought it to federal judges and they got warrants to spy on the Trump campaign. That's enormous. If that's proven to be true, the whole Democratic Party gets hammered in a way that probably hands the election to Trump. So what Feinstein wanted to do was get out in front of this thing and to create doubt in the minds of people that maybe there was some validity to the fusion gps that's why she did it so how she about that for an explanation how about that's that? really that's really good she Thank said you. she said that she was pressured to release it she later said no i didn't really mean pressure to release it i think she did mean that if so who was pressuring her um we have to assume schumer and pelosi are running the party now and schumer would be the only guy that could really put pressure on her so i mean it's a guess but I would say those precincts are the ones to look at. Okay, one recommendation, and then one last question. Recommendation. If you haven't seen Darkest Hour, you yeah, need you to see it. Yeah, you told me it was good. I haven't seen it yet. But, you you uh, have to. It's okay. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, next, predictions for 2018. Anything that you think, nobody's seeing this one coming, but I'm telling you it's right around the corner. Well, I think there's going to be some... Uh, some action on the Hillary Clinton foundation front. I, I, I think that that, you know, that they use that foundation for political purposes. Yeah. 
and enrich themselves at the same time. So that I keep your eye on that, and as I just said, the Fusion GPS. And I, and I would say that, you know, thousands of Americans are going to enjoy Killing England in uh, 2018. <laughs> because it's a terrific book. Oh, wow, you are good. You are good. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com and uh, the uh, new book, the latest, uh, Killing England. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me, England. God Happy bye. New Year. You bet. Bye.